What's up YouTube, this is LDS Reliance. Today I wanna to talk about lithium batteries for solar and renewable energy applications. Lithium batteries are the most common energy storage medium in the world today. Lithium ion is the most common of those technologies and it is used in three different forms. Pouches like you see in cell phones like in this picture. Cylinders like you see in power tool and laptop batteries and prismatic cells, which can come in any shape and are most commonly used in electric vehicles. Another technology is lithium iron phosphate, which we'll talk a little bit more about later. There's all kinds of other crazy lithium technologies like lithium cobalt and lithium air, but we're gonna limit it to lithium ion and lithium iron phosphate for this discussion. Since lithium technology is still emerging, the cost for the given amount of energy compared to other battery types is still pretty high. The good news is that price is falling rapidly. Deutsche Bank estimated lithium ion batteries at about $500 per kilowatt hour in 2014, and that dropped to $350 per kilowatt hour in 2015, according to Bloomberg New Energy Finance. Now in 2017, the cost is down to $227 per kilowatt hour, so the price is getting there steadily. Lithium batteries require a battery management system, or BMS, to monitor voltage and temperature of each cell to prevent excessive charging and discharging. Even with a BMS, it's critical that all of the lithium ion cells be very closely matched. We've all heard or seen what can happen if you abuse a lithium ion battery. But even more than that, if you overcharge a lithium ion battery, it will permanently damage that battery, whereas a lead acid battery, it can handle a little bit of abuse. Lithium batteries can cycle many more times in their lifetime than lead acid. Whether that makes up for their high initial costs or not is a point of debate. Lithium iron batteries are even more expensive than lithium ion batteries, but can cycle even more times than lithium ion. That makes them some of the longest lasting batteries on the market today. Cold temperatures have much less of an effect on lithium batteries than lead acid batteries. For example, at negative four degrees Fahrenheit, a lead acid battery's capacity drops by 50%, whereas a lithium iron phosphate battery only drops by 8%. Another major advantage lithium has over lead acid is that it maintains a higher voltage as it discharges. This is huge in solar because it means you can run your load for a longer amount of time at its optimal voltage. Lithium batteries also self-discharge less compared to a lot of other battery types. So that means when they're sitting on a shelf or sitting in your battery bank and not being used, they're maintaining their voltage longer. For example, flooded lead acid batteries lose about five or six percent per month, whereas lithium ion will only lose about two or three percent. But the major problem with lithium, and the only reason that it's not catching on yet in solar, is that there are very few commercially available charge controllers and inverter chargers for the residential solar market. In other words, there are very few options of charge controllers you can buy that will support lithium battery technology out of the box. Of course, with many charge controllers, you can create your own charging profiles, but unless you really know what you're doing, you're gonna be playing with fire, literally. The good news is companies like Tesla are bringing innovative products to market like the Tesla Powerwall, which is a battery, inverter, and charge controller all in one. But the Powerwall isn't really a battery and it's very expensive for the given amount of energy that you get. So I can't wait for the day that lithium technology takes off in solar and it's affordable to everyone and everything will be wonderful. Until then, unfortunately, lead acid is still the king. Thanks for watching the video, guys. If you like what you've seen, go ahead and hit subscribe.